Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Alright, pack one, pick one. Mizium tank is pretty bad. I think I'm just gonna take Cruelty over Mowu. Nothing else that really stands out amongst the commons. Drake is fine. But yeah, I'm not gonna take it over Cruelty. Huatli is very conditional. Bond of Passion. It's never amazing and pretty expensive for an act of treason effect. Mizium tank, difficult to trigger. Mowu can be great in the right deck, but it's gonna kind of restrict you in a certain archetype, whereas Cruelty is great in any black deck. So it's a lot more flexible here. Alright, so now we've got an interesting choice. We could stick to black with another great removal spell, Spark Harvest, which is probably what I'm gonna do. Or we could get Adventurous and take like a Tamyo and move into a more three-color control -y deck. Tamyo is good but not amazing in that you can only plus so many times before you mill yourself. So if you don't have a Jace as an alternate win condition, it can be risky. So I think I'm just going to stick to black and take another Spark Harvest here. Which I think I like over any of the other cards. Plus it keeps us in one color. Alright, now we've got another interesting pick. The cards that jump out at me are Tamiya's Epiphany, Dreadmalkin, and Trusted Pegasus. So Epiphany, just a nice card draw spell to maybe set us up for a blue-black more controlling deck with two removal spells, a card draw spell. And then we just need to make sure we pick up some finishers, some of those nice six mana giants would be a good example. Dreadmalkin is a nice card, plays better in a more sacrifice heavy deck where we've got some sacrifice fodder. Uh, Lazo Depp Reavers are a great example. Don't have any of those yet, but doesn't mean that we can't make that happen. Pegasus would set us up for a black-white deck, which is usually on the more aggressive end of the spectrum, um, and that would still be fine. It's not like these removal spells would be bad in a an aggro deck. So I think you can make a good case for either one of these. I think I would take those over Hardfire. Hardfire usually goes pretty late. A Druid is a fine two-drop, but I don't think it compares to these other cards. And I like Epiphany over Visionary right now. Blue is pretty decent in War of the Spark draft in general. Um, not the biggest fan of white, but Pegasus is one of the better cards in white. And Dread Malkin keeps us in black, but that also means that it's not going to excel in a more controlling deck. So if we do end up blue-black after all, the Dread Malkin might not be amazing. So I think I'm leaning Epiphany. So had we taken Pegasus, we kind of would have gotten rewarded with the second Pegasus. Had we taken Dread Malkin, it would have been easy Paradise Druid as the best card in the pack. I think we still just take the Paradise Druid as the best card in the pack. And then we can keep our options open. Green lets us splash pretty easily, so we could easily be like a green-black deck with a bit of mana fixing to still splash Epiphany, which is very splashable. Just take the Druid here. And then we could take a band together, reasonable removal spell in green. Don't have many creatures yet, but those will come. Otherwise we could take a dam breaker to go with the epiphany, but I think green-black splash blue makes more sense than trying to force blue-black. Spellgorger weird is also a great card. There's a griffin, which is fine. But the problem with taking weird is that we would probably end up just black-red, and then we give up on paradise root and epiphany. And I don't think that's worth it, so I'd rather just take the band together and then we can make green-black splash blue work and then the card quality is going to be quite high. Alright, got some decent options here. Definitely prefer the Sultai colored cards here. Blue, black and green over the red ones, which are pretty bad. So we seem to be in the right colors. Question is, which card do we want out of this pack? Could make a solid case for Toll of the Invasion. Could make a case for Saratok or Wrangler. I think I prefer taking one of the green or black cards, considering we're more likely to be green-black splash blue. And Skulker could be a splash card, but it's not amazing. If you cast this very late in the game, it's still a nice unblockable creature, but it's a card you would much prefer to play on turn 5 if you can. Whereas a card like Epiphany, you're not often going to cast on turn 4, since it's better to affect the board first, and then late in the game, once you're empty-handed, you can use Epiphany to refuel, whereas Skulker... Being a creature, we would much rather cast on Curve. So I think I'm leaning Toll over these other green cards. Toll's pretty decent. Bit of hand disruption, the 1-1 one, one token can be sacrificed to a Spark Harvest. Just plays quite well in this type of deck. 
and seventh pick another band together and that's very late there's also still a burning prophet in the pack which is also quite late for this card but i'm not going to complain just take another band together so we've got four removal spells already two band together cruelty harvest and the hand disruption spell in the form of toll of the invasion so our deck is shaping up pretty well just need to make sure we pick up some creatures to go along these band together so otherwise they're not going to be very effective and here is a a good time to pick up a Saratok, just a beefy creature, fights well with Band together. And I don't mind me a New Horizons, helps us ramp, fix our mana. If we can pick up some more 2-drops, that can pick up the plus 1 counter even better. Alright, now we can take a Primordial Worm, just as a random curve topper here. Seems fine, I would much prefer the Tithebearer Giant as a 6-drop, but uh, we'll take the Worm as a placeholder. Nothing here that we want. Take the uncommon for the vault. And I guess we'll take a giant just in case. Alright, so first pack went alright. Lots of removal. Do need to make sure we pick up some more creatures in general to go with the band togethers. Something that's not particularly great but would play well in our deck is the Crawl Stinger, the 3 mana 2 2 death touch creature, just because. That alongside band together can kill anything without needing any help. We wouldn't mind more ram creatures, more two drops in general to take advantage of new horizons. Maybe some powerful bombs we can splash with horizons and druid and other mana fixing we might pick up. But don't mind this as our first pack. Well then, Sarkon is definitely a bomb. So might be worth it to go out of our way to pick up Sarkon here. What else do we have in the pack? There's a Sphinx, which is not very splashable at double blue. Trying to play Sphinx and trying to play Sarkon is basically the same, so I'd much rather just have Sarkon. There's a Taskmaster as an excellent 2-drop, which wouldn't require us to splash. But at this point we could also just be red-green and then splash a bit of black and make it easier to cast our Sarkon on curve. Dismissal also on the splash wouldn't be amazing, but fine. So there's nothing we're really giving up on other than Eternal Taskmaster by taking Sarkon. So I think it's worth it to take the bomb here and then try and somehow fit it into our deck or maybe pivot into red-green and splash some of the black cards instead. Alright, what do we have here? Some very good blue cards. Kazmina is excellent, Eternal Skylord is excellent and even Eternal is very good too. So three great blue cards. Um, yeah, nothing great in red, black or green. The Grizzly is playable but unexciting, so I think we're gonna probably take one of the blue cards here and then hope to pick up more mana fixing so we can cast all the cards. Skylord is nice if we already have a 1-1 amass token in play, so plays well with like a Toll of the Invasion, so we can attack with a hasty 3-3 flyer. Kazmina just helps us discard additional lands in the late game and help us draw into our bombs, and also just plays well with Sarkon. So I think I'm leaning Kazmina, but Skylord would be very good too. Heed my instruction and prepare for war. Alright, there's another powerful Planeswalker, the Wanderer. Great against any green base deck with a lot of 4-power creatures, especially red-green, where it shuts down both fight spells and burn spells. But of course that is yet another color, can only stretch the mana fixing so far. Arlen's Wolf is playable, Honor God Pharaoh is playable. Not a great Burning Prophet deck. Crocodile is just filler. What are we doing here? So far we only know that green is our main color since we need it for Druid and Horizons to fix the rest of the mana. And we would like to splash some blue for Kazmin and Tamio, and we would like to make Sarkon work as well, which will require more mana fixing. And then the black cards are somewhat splashable, we don't have to play Toll of the Invasion, which isn't a great splash card if we draw it late or can cast it late and the opponent's empty-handed, but Cruelty and Spark Harvest we could still pretty easily splash, even though Spark Harvest gets a lot better if we can cast it for double black. Could still take the Wanderer and then just try and pick up as much mana fixing as we can. I don't think we're missing out on too much by taking the Wanderer. I think my next pick would probably be the Honor of the God Pharaoh, in case we end up red as one of our primary colors, just to kind of help us smooth out our draws for when we do draw some off-color cards without the mana fixing, we can discard them. And if we play a few extra mana sources, we can discard them in the late game if we're flooding out. I don't think Prophet is great here, we're gonna end up with a few too many 
Creatures for Profit to be amazing. Would still be playable, but not amazing. Right now we don't have a ton of creatures, so Profit looks decent. But generally speaking, Profit is going to be much better in blue-red than red-green, for example. So I'm just going to take a Speculative Wanderer in case we want to cast it. Alright, what do we have here? Definitely not an Ashok deck. Already have plenty of bombs we can splash. Don't need Ashok as a win condition. Ashok is much better if we have a lot of creatures to protect Ashok as our win condition. And right now we have very few creatures to do that. We're seeing a pretty late Avon Eternal. So we might just want to move into blue as one of our colors. Maybe ditch Sarkon after all. And then we can be blue-green splash black. Because Avon Eternal is very good. I think I take Eternal here. Again, we're still pretty open. The next few picks are going to decide which direction we go in. Rawls Outburst is pretty tempting, but it's on the double splash, or if we end up blue or red as one of our primary colors on the splash. There's also Guild Globe and Plaza as mana fixing, so how greedy do we want to get? Do we want to cast our spells, or do we just take the powerful card? There's also Sahili, which could be okay. Yes, yeah, Sahili could still be good, since we can cast it if we're either blue or red. As one of our primary colors looks like black dried up in this pack. Not seeing a ton of good black cards. So we might just not be black as one of our primaries, but we just splash these two maybe. Could also just pivot into blue-red, splash black, and then ditch green and white all together. Yeah, we picked Cruelty and then Harvest, so those were our first two picks. And then we didn't see any black in the first pack, didn't see any black in the second pack, so black might just be cut off from both directions. So we probably shouldn't count on black in the third pack. So it might be worth it to kind of uh, bail on black and move into a different color. So this is a, an interesting decision. Just take the mana fixing. All right, let's take the plaza. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, double black's not gonna be easy. And if we want to play Death Sprout, we kind of have to commit to black more heavily, which we just discussed seemed to be pretty cut off. It's also pretty late Lazotep Reaver, so maybe black isn't as cut off as we thought. I mean, I'm, I don't think I'm going to miss out on the Honor the Godfather too much. So let's just take the Death Sprout and kind of see if black's maybe more open than we think. And yeah, there's some okay black cards. Also some good green cards. Already have a decent amount of threes, although band together... And Cruelty aren't necessarily cards we're casting on turn 3. So it's not like a Spark Reaper or a Grizzly would be horrible. But I didn't mind a Spinner just as an early play. Now we could just take a Silver Wing, which we can cast no matter which colors we end up in. We know that we're not white as one of our primaries. So this seems like a pretty straightforward Silver Wing. And I guess we'll take an Opportunist in case black's one of our primary colors. It's just a filler 2-drop. I'm not excited about it, but there's nothing else we want here. Alright, so we're definitely seeing some black cards this pack after all. Take a Behemoth. I don't think we're casting Nissa's Triumph. Just take a Wall of Ruins just in case. All right, so the third pack's going to have to decide our fate here. Definitely need some mana fixing. So that's going to be our priority. And how about a Leyline Prowler to fix our mana? Looks decent. Again, Tamyo is going to be a little bit sketchy. I think Prowler is more important. Just a great card. And then we're going to basically be the green-black base multicolor shenanigans deck. And hopefully we can pick up some more New Horizons, some more... Well, Paradise Root would be the best one. Gill Globes. Hmm, it's a tempting Prison Realm right there. Do we want to take a mediocre Arlen's Wolf over it? Could take a Soren's Thirst. Yeah, I think I still take the Prison Realm here. And then really just pick any Gill Globes we can find. All right, Mana Geode have to take it. What are we giving up on? I guess Nurture might be better. Although looking at our curve, it's actually kind of close since we have a bunch of stuff to do at four. 
not a ton of stuff to do at 3 proactively. And if they kill the Nurture, we're in trouble, whereas Geode is much harder to kill. So I kind of like the Geode more as a more reliable piece of mana fixing. No mana fixing here, so forced to take Challenger Troll pretty much. Not gonna splash the Larwin Enforcer. Don't think we have enough Planeswalkers to warrant Aid the Fallen. Alright, Bond of Flourishing looks good. It's kind of like mana fixing. Liana's Triumph is not very good to begin with, making them sack their worst creature. We're not heavy white for Pegasus. Toll would be okay too, but I think I prefer Bond as a nice play on turn two. Alright, now the Nurture, pretty easy. Mana fixing. Guard Mage would be great, but we already have enough good greedy cards. Just want to make sure we can cast our spells to some capacity. And I guess now we can take Toll. Don't think we want Watley. Don't have enough creatures for it. There's also Thirst, but that's double black, which isn't the easiest on turn two. And we've got more powerful things to do later in the game. So we're probably not going to get any more fixing. Reaper looks okay with the stall of the invasions. Over another silver wing. And nothing here that we really want. Probably just take the Wrangler. How likely is Bond of Flourishing to miss? Not very. The fact that it finds lands as well means you're pretty unlikely to miss. No, not at all of the invasion. Sure. I think we like that over... Well, maybe Charity Extractor is playable here. So let's let's build our deck here. We've got most of our deck in front of us. Could maybe drop the Aven Eternal, which isn't an amazing splash card. And then just keep blue for Cosmina and Epiphany. And this is kind of our curve. We can cut uh, Behemoth pretty easily. Don't need the Worm. And our mana fixing is Mana Geode, Plaza, Nurture, and Paradise Root, and to an extent Bond of Flourishing. And I guess Leyline Prowler as well, so we do have a bit of mana fixing. So do we need this Charity Extractor as a turn 4 play? I don't think so. Do we want a third Toll of the Invasion? Probably not. Already have plenty of cards, need to make a few cuts. I don't think this pick matters, so I guess we'll take that one anyway. All right. Any mountain we add to our deck significantly makes it more difficult to cast our other spells. Could see one island, since these are cards we're more likely to want to play on turn 4, as opposed to Prison Realm and Wander. And if we can cast these, they can smooth out our draw to help us cast the other spells. So probably a 17 lander, so we can add one more land here. So need to make two more cuts. I guess Opportunist can go. Wrangler seems better. Although I don't have a ton of four powered creatures. We've got the Ceratok, the Troll, and then Sarkon that make four powered creatures for Wrangler. Band together doesn't look amazing. Bit light on actual creatures to fight with. Although it does play well with the Prowler. I guess having one basic mountain is nice to search up with Death Sprout. That's something I didn't consider. Definitely want one island. I don't think we have room for one plains. Question is, do we want one mountain for Sarkon? I don't think we do. And drawing the basic mountain is just so bad if we have a Death Sprout in hand. If we draw like Forest, Forest, Swamp, Mountain, we can't cast this. So Wrangler and Opportunist are the weaker two drops we could consider cutting. Could consider shaving a band together since we're a bit creature light. Could make a case for cutting the Wanderer since it's a bit conditional at times. Is Silverwing good enough? It's not amazing, but at least it's something we can reliably cast on turn 4. It's not like Death Sprout is going to be a turn 4 play very often. So this is more the actual curve. Although Sarkon on turn 5 is a bit hopeful. Yeah, I don't mind shaving a band together. I think it's going to be stuck in our hand a little bit too often without killing anything. But I could see playing 1. And then maybe cut one of the weaker 2-drops, and I think Wrangler's going to be better than Opportunist since we have a lot of mana sinks and things to do in the late game. So I don't think spending 7 mana to drain the opponent for 2 is going to come up enough to warrant Opportunist over Wrangler. Yeah, I think this will be our deck here. No mountains, just hope to cast Sarkon some other way. Got a decent amount of fixing. Got Paradise Druids, Bonds, 
is fixing to an extent. Prowler, Horizons, Geode, Nurture, and then Deathsprout can also fix our mana, but not for Sarkon. Let's try this. Well, perfect mana. Are we gonna cast Sarkon on turn 5? Would be pretty sweet. Uh oh. It's the mirror. Got a center nurture anyway if they kill the prowler, but would prefer for the prowler to stick around. All right. <laughs> so do we death sprout main phase or do we wait? Since we definitely want to kill the prowler, I guess we want to kill it right away. Otherwise, we get to tap the prowler for mana, and we're gonna have to kill this at some points. So sadly, because we don't have the basic mountain, we can't cast our Sarkon next turn. But I think that's fine. Ooh, Kaya. Ah, there goes her mana fixing. So Sarkon will have to wait. Nurture might get exiled as well, but I don't want to run out troll in face of Kaya. It's a big nurture. Opponents on the beatdown plan. Nurture attacks. All right. Kazmina. I think I want to kill this in case they can proliferate. I had guild business to attend to Although, of course, Aid the Fallen is also a concern. Alright, let's uh, do this now. They didn't seem to have removal. Keep land in hand, hope to dodge and aid the Fallen, although they're looking at the graveyard, so who knows. Yeah, that's kind of the concern against black-green. They can either have aid the Fallen or they can proliferate, and you don't know which one you have to play around. So we can play Sarkon here. We begin. Your end has arrived. And now we can keep Kaya at one loyalty since even if they proliferate they can't kill anything. And that does it. Sweet. That was an intense game. Perfect mana once again. Turn 2 Wrangler, turn 3 Prowler. Turn 4 Cosmina. Like you do. And no Giant's Greetings or Pyrohelix. Spellgorger weird. Yeah, I think I'll attack. And then still play Prowler. 
We might kill the weird at some point, but... It's probably not gonna get out of range of cruelty anytime soon. Dismissal to bounce. Alright, Sarkon gives us something to work towards. Don't really want to trade a Wrangler for the zombies, since Sarkon can make a 4-4. If they play another bound spell, then we might have to cruelty the weird before it gets too big. But it's pretty efficient to next turn go plaza plus cruelty. Flux channeler, that's gonna be a scary card. Opponent says go. Well, a wonder now gives us a way to get rid of a big weird. There's nothing in my hand I really wanna discard necessarily with Cosmina. Could just play plaza and play reaper, set up our defenses. Opponent's gonna grow the weird, and then hopefully we can get rid of it with a wanderer. Seems fine. A look at our hand, isn't it beautiful? We got four planeswalkers in hand, essentially. Obnixilus represents. Alright, what do we want to do next? I guess we'll just play Sarkon. They could deal with a flyer and then even Eternal can finish off Sarkon. So it would be a little bit safer to maybe cruelty the Eternal first and then play Cosmina. I guess I'll go Cosmina first. Alright, can ditch Swamp. And I'll do this now, I think, in case they have like a Teferi's Time Twist or Lazada Plating. There's definitely an advantage to keeping up mana, because then we kind of threaten to have the Prowler on defense. Maybe activate the Reaper in response to removal. But I would rather just deal with the Flyer and make sure it dies. Skulker. Alright. Opponents declining to grow their creatures, but I guess that's fine. Let's uh, loot again. Don't even need this anymore. Could also Spark Harvest a Skulker first, so it doesn't finish off Sarkon. Are we really sad if our opponent spends an entire turn making this unblockable to kill Sarkon? Not really, because then we still have a 4-4, we're pretty far ahead on board. Eh, I think I'm just gonna play Sarkon. Could also just use this for one mana. I guess that's also reasonable. Just sacrifice a token here. Eh, I guess I'm sold. Well, got to Mythic with Rainbow Road, not bad. Yeah, let's keep it up here. Draft's not over yet. Alright, um, uh, sure. I think I play Prowler before casting Toll here. Can always Toll next turn if we want to. Alright, Tyrant's Corn, fair enough. That's probably the only card they could have had since they kind of paused with two mana. They're gonna Toll us back, maybe taking Toll. Yeah, the other one could have been Lazata Plating. I think those are the only two they could have had in that spot. Don't really want to trade here. I guess it could also be Liliana's Triumph, but that's not a, an amazing card, so I don't expect people at this rank to play that. 
Vizier. Now I'm fine with the trade. Since Wrangler is not very good in our deck. Definitely implies that our opponent has more amass zombies coming up, which is why they were fine trading. But still happy to trade there. So, waiting to top deck our powerful planeswalkers. Sarkon's the only one that we can't cast at the moment. Kazmina, Epiphany would all be excellent. There's Angrath. So now Manus and Death Touch. It's a pretty powerful combination. Do we play out our lands? I guess we do. If we draw Epiphany, we might want to cast whatever we draw off of Epiphany. Don't want to trade the Nurture quite yet here. Now that it's a 4-4, four, four, killing it is much more beneficial. Dam Breaker strong, so this game is not looking great for us. One downside of killing Dam Breakers if they have a Defallen, they can get it back, whereas they can't get back a zombie. And then they could minus Angrath and get back both Dam Breaker and Angrath. But also, if we kill the Dam Breaker, we get to attack, so that's probably worth it. And go after Angrath. Make all sail for high and dry. Keep land in hand because of Cosmina. Mana Geode. Guess we'll attack. Bottom that one. Say go. Alright, we'll need some help off the top, but now we can cast all the spells in our deck. Tibalt. Troll's not bad. Troll's unlikely to resolve or survive here. Opponent's been holding some cards, so they might have no escape. They might have cruelty. Alright, maybe it's a Soren's Thirst. Nope. Just gonna put us to five. Troll resolves. No removal on of turn. Attack with both. So, I mean, we definitely have to block the 5-5, five five, so this seems like a natural block. Why wouldn't we block the Vizier? Could be a Vraska's finisher, but we don't really care. Yeah, sure. Alright. I think I'm still fine with that trade. And a Rampage. Alright, that explains it. They just wanted to kill everything. Land a draw, sadly. I think I'll play it in case of Epiphany once again. So we can maybe Epiphany... I guess we would be unable to cast Sarkom. Saratox a little bit too late. Alright. And seems fine. Probably gonna lead with the spinner so it gets the counter from New Horizons. And then we've got our mana fixing. Don't think we need to race. Strix. So 
probably just casting the silver wing here add more creatures to the board before we start drawing cards all right well got some good blockers for pegasus always have prison realm if we need to get rid of it mono flyers all right do we bond first or do we epiphany first i guess bond first is fine all right i guess we'll take a sarcon bottom don't really need paradise druid anymore do we want a spark reaper don't have a ton of sacrifice fodder for it. I think we just keep the Saratok bottom and the rest. Not bad. Two mana doesn't really represent much, so I think it's still Sarkon time. Keep land in hand to discard to Kazmina, potentially. No attacks. Would like to play Kazmina here, but maybe it's better to lead with uh, Nurture. I will call the dragons. Attacking with Sarkhan is bad if they have like uh, Gideon's Triumph. I think we just chill. Play Nurture. And if they want to counter this, that's fine. And say go. Bounce her token. Guard mage, more flyers. Alright. Do we keep plusing Sarkon or do we cash him in for another dragon? Keeping him might be greedy, but it's not like they can currently pressure him. I guess we can both play Kazmina and Deathsprout. So we'll start with Kazmina. See what we draw into. Not a land, so that's fine. I think we just plus an attack. And I'm probably gonna Death Sprout one of their creatures anyway. Alright. Snare Spinner has been doing work. I guess Cry 1 could be more valuable here. Now it seems like a good turn to make a dragon, while they keep up mana for maybe removal. I guess it's not a bad turn for Saratok. I think I'm keeping Geode in hand. And then just make a dragon. Ooh, commence the endgame. It's unexpected. Fair enough. Could have tapped her mana a bit better here. Could have scryed with a mana geode. I guess we don't have any proliferate to loot more with Kazmina in our deck, do we? So I guess it was fine to tap out for geode. Alright. Instructable. Probably just chomping. Now we do have to watch out for that last of the plating that we suspect they might still have in hand. We can lead with Prison Realm, although I'm not sure what we want to kill. Do we get rid of Gideon? Do we get rid of the 5-5? Five five? They might plating a response and then we're safe to attack with Sarkon and Kazmina. Although if we 
realm first and they played in. Then they could double block Sarkhan and trade. I think we'll lead with prison realm, see what happens. Could also prison realm the Pegasus. Don't know if that's better than Gideon or the 5-5. Five five. I think the 5-5 five is more annoying. Alright, that works. It's plus. I summon you. Make some attacks. How about we send all three flyers at Gideon? And then Ceratok at their face. Could also send in the 2 2, honestly. Doesn't really block all that well. Let's do this. And then we'll play the mana geode. Alright, Gideon's Triumph with a Gideon in play. So glad we attacked with the 2 2. I guess we sack Kazmina and the token. Opponents jumping pretty aggressively. Maybe they can proliferate next turn, who knows. Bottom all the lands. I guess it could have a time wipe, yeah. Wonder strike, sure. So they can minus Gideon if they want to. They're gonna plus. Indestructible. Sarkhan down. But we get to kill Gideon and we still have two four pound creatures in play. Prowler two. Now do we send all three at Gideon? Might be safer in case they have like a arrow. Second Gideon's Triumph would be brutal. A good hit. So some trades happened. Pride mates. Alright, they get to grow the Pride Mate 2 here, but we'll be able to finish off Gideon. I believe in you. I think we are fine to toll here, they might be empty handed, but it doesn't hurt to check. Well, it's definitely not empty handed. Alright, so... Gideon dies. Do we want to trade here? I guess that's fine. Not again. I think given all the cards that were played and that our opponent had, this is probably the best outcome we could have hoped for. Reaper's not bad. Maybe sack the army first, see what we draw. Probably don't need to chum block anytime soon. 14 cards remaining still. Alright, that's fine. And I guess we're playing out our lands now. Because of Reaper. Which relevant cards do we have left? Still have a troll in our deck somewhere. A wrangler. So now they can pump Screecher. And have a 1-4 and a 4-4. So I'll just play wrangler and pass. Oh yeah, trolls on the bottom. Did we shuffle our library at some point? I guess we shuffled when we cast Death Sprout. So the troll is somewhere in the middle. Don't know where. 
Still have a lot of removal spells we can draw, so making trade seems bad when we can just draw a Cruelty or a Spark Harvest and then get rid of the Pride Mate and attack. Or the Screecher. Alright, gotta be running out of land at some point here. 8, 9, 10, 2 at the bottom. Guess we still have 5 lands left. Never mind, we discarded 2, so 3 lands left in the top 10 cards. So 7 spells. Spark Harvest, Cruelty, Troll, uh, The Wanderer. So there's some good ones. But I don't think we're proactively sacking the Wrangler just to dig deeper. Can also kind of bait our opponent into using this creature. Pride Mate becomes a 4-4. Four, four. And then we can maybe kill it with the Wanderer. There's a troll. So now they can double block the Ceratok and it's fine to attack. So it could actually be beneficial if Rapun proliferates and we draw the Wanderer. It's a little sketchy to attack with the Serendoc, since if they can proliferate at instant speed, then they could make this into a 5-5 after pumping with Screecher, but now that we drew Cruelty, we're fine to attack anyway. So a Troll and Serendoc attack. And if anything bad happens, we can Cruelty. Could have cast Cruelty on Screecher to begin with, but I don't think we have to here. Just keep this to maybe kill whatever blocks the Serendoc. Is this just a chum block? It seems to be. Or not. The fairy's time twist the light shield, so... That's fine. We'll cruelty the pride maiden response. Trample over for four, put them to two. Now they're just dead on board, so... And seems fine. Go and play Nurture. I guess Silverwing might be slightly better just to get that flyer going. Don't need the extra mana fixing from Nurture. Unless they kill the Prowler. It's just that the Nurture blocks the Druid a little bit better. And maybe baits them into growing the Druid, at which point the Wanderer can kill it. So maybe playing Nurture was still better than Silverwing. Silverwing slightly more aggressive. Arlen. So 
So now I think I like killing the wolf and attacking with Prowler and Silverwing at Arlen instead of killing Arlen herself because we get rid of a creature and we get a decent attack in. And then the question is, do we harvest or cruelty? I think I'll spark harvest. And if they want to jump with a nurture, that's fine. If we draw land, we could go nurture plus cruelty next turn. So it's not like if our opponent somehow gets to keep Arlen in play, we would be super far behind since the nurture is just a good blocker for it. Even if they proliferate, it's not the end of the world. Also, if they proliferate and minus Arlen, then the wolf only is a 2-2, since it's not going to pick up the extra plus one plus one counter from the static ability. So 2-2 two is pretty manageable. And if they proliferate and the Wanderer kills a Druid. Leyline Prowler. Take five. Now we gotta think about whether or not we want to kill Arlin in case of Aid the Fallen getting her back. Band together Prowler, sure. Kazmina, so we're unable to cast her right now. I think we want to play Nurtures so we unlock the off-color cards here for next turn. And then, do we bother attacking? Don't think we do. And I don't think we finish off Arlen. Just stay back, protect our life total, and leverage these powerful Planeswalkers we have in hand. Again, I'm happy if they proliferate, since then the Wander lines up pretty well. Prowler attacks, we could double block Silverwing and Wrangler, or we can just take it and then keep Cruelty to answer Prowler. The Flyer can definitely be useful if we need to pressure more Planeswalkers, so I think I'll take it for now. Reaper's a good draw. So we could Reaper first, have three mana to use the ability, and then maybe go for a double block. If they try and blow us out with removal, we can sack and at least draw a card. I think we Reaper first. All right, well, it's gonna force issue. But now I'm happy to double block Prowler, I think. Could also double block Nurture, maybe that's better. Take five, kill Prowler. Yeah, that seems better. New Horizons could also be nice. If we play Kazmina, we can still Cruelty if we don't discard land. This seems fine. Cruelty Exiles, and I'm still not going to finish off Arlen because I don't want to enable Aid the Fallen. And again, if they proliferate, then the Wanderer lines up pretty well against Druid. Happy to double block if they attack. Yeah, we could go Horizon into Kazmina, but I wanted to kill the Prowler this turn cycle, I think. Since we're getting pretty low on life. So currently, just a Nurture in the Graveyard for potential aid the Fallen. Spark Harvest Kazmina, fair enough. That's why they wanted to kill the Spark Reaper so badly. We could also New Horizons the Druid and then get rid of it with the Wanderer. It's not a crazy idea. I think I might just go for it. Oh, never mind. Horizons only lets us target our own creature. Alright, never mind. No cool plays allowed. So I guess we'll pump this. And then this can attack. This can attack. We'll keep Nurture back. Seems okay. Opponent trades. Gonna keep Plaza on hand in case of discard. Davriel's still a card our opponent could have. And we've got all the mana fixing in the world for a potential Sarkon anyway. 
So now the Wanderer lines up pretty well. Dol takes Realm. It's a good draw. Bottom all of those. And then I guess we'll cast a troll. Say go. Probably should have made sure to put uh, Paradise Root on the top here in case we do end up reaching the late game. Opponent is looking at their graveyard, so it looks like they do have an 8 to Fallen and they're gonna finally pull the trigger. So glad we didn't kill Arlen. So what can they get back? Not much. Center Nurture, Palm Bright Root. They can proliferate and then make another wolf. Cash in Arlen, that's fine. What do we attack with? I think we just attack with Troll. Keep two creatures back to protect the Wanderer since they might be holding something big that they don't want to play into the Wanderer. Send in the Troll. Put on Chumps. Alright, now we just go to top deck Sarkon. Snare Spinner instead. Ooh, Ugin. Ugin cannot kill Silverwing, that's an important interaction to point out. Alright, so we want to attack first and then cast all of the invasion after they get their Ugin card back. I think we send these all at Ugin. I think even the Nurture. Since we're going to make another blocker anyway. And they can double block nurture. Caution, mortals. And our opponent has seen enough. Alright, sweet. So Rainbow Road is 4 and 1. Let's see if we can keep it up. Alright, and looks probably keepable. I mean, we can't cast Realm or Sarkon, but Toll is a pretty reasonable card to play on turn 3 on the play. And then we just gotta hope to draw into some of our mana fixing. Haven't drawn our Paradise Druid yet. Always cried it to the bottom with Epiphany. That would have been a nice one on turn 2 here. Nurture will fit the bill. Rager. All right, so pretty stacked hand. Next turn they place Tybalt or New Horizons. Then they've got a Silverwing and then later Worm and Celebration. Celebration's probably the scariest card since we want to go late with this hand and Celebration can get back a ton of cards. And we should be able to hold off this initial offense. Sarkon making a 4-4 holds back the Silverwing if we can get there. Realm can exile the Worm and the tokens from Tybalt don't really get past our 1-3s and 2-4s. So I think we take Celebration. 
We're not an aggro deck that's trying to close out the game quickly, where disrupting their curve is more important. Our deck goes to the late game. So we gotta make sure we can deal with their bombs. New Horizons was a pretty good draw. So you could go New Horizons plus Snare Spinner and the next turn play Sarkon. I like that. And I don't actually mind double blocking, although the spinner, I guess, lines up pretty well against the silver wing. Yeah, I think I'm okay if they pump and trade. Yeah, but they spent their entire turn pumping the Rager twice, just to trade, and we get to slam Sarkon. I think that's a good place for us to be. Also important to note that Sarkon's static ability lines up pretty well against Tybalt. Those tokens will die if they attack. I guess that's fine. Just Spark Harvest it. Plus Sarkon. And then next turn we can decide if we want to make another token or if we keep activating Sarkon. So we've got an answer for the worm. And I guess we can keep plussing for now and then next turn make a token. And that's gonna prompt a concession. All right, sweet. Alright, we've got our turn 2 Paradise Druid, although we might not be able to cast it on turn 2. Still gonna keep it since we have a Gateway Plaza, which makes green. And then Epiphany to refuel. You gotta watch out not to play Plaza on turn 1, would be unfortunate. So we'll have to see here whether we need to toll or play Druid first. I think we'll play Druid first. Populous. Might even be correct to just nurture first. What card are we afraid of at 4 mana that they could play? Out of a mostly white deck. They didn't have Pegasus. We would have had that covered with Cruelty anyway. And now also Silverwing. Yeah, I think we'll nurture. Develop our mana. Good blocker. No need to trade. And then next turn we can maybe double spell. Fine strike, fair enough. No attacks. I mean, opponent might just be missing a color, in which case spending mana to Toll of the Invasion is not too effective since they're gonna have all spells. So we could just Kazmina, leverage that advantage. Yeah. All our cards are so good. Think we wanna keep Silverwing since Pegasus could be a concern. And we already have a ton of ground blockers and mana creatures. So, even though Prowler's a better card than Silverwing, right now I think I prefer the Silverwing. And I don't think I attack, because I don't want to lose the Nurture to a random Divine Arrow or Gideon's Triumph. doesn't seem necessary. I guess with Kazmina in play, they couldn't have cast Divine Arrow specifically. Opponent discards to hand size, so they were red-white. Alright, we're just going to keep looting. Probably don't need more lands. And this turn we can Reaper plus Invasion. So we'll Invasion first in case we want a Cruelty. Wow, that's a hand. So Feather, no red. And they have a Sandwich Sprint as well. 
Ugin, single combat. Single combat is probably the scariest card here since that can help them reset. And then we just gotta try and kill them before they get to Ugin. Got an answer for Feather. Yeah, let's take the sweeper. And now we wanna apply the pressure. So I'm just gonna offer the trade here. And then play Reaper and then next turn we can start swinging with everyone. Just gotta leverage this board advantage we've accumulated. Opponent's gonna draw the mountain. Good to know. What's the play here? How much damage can we deal here? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So it's probably worth it to just kill that. I guess we can play this first. If they had a single combat, they could have actually recovered, but... Good thing we got rid of it. Sweet. Alright, 6 and 1, let's see if we can go the distance. Alright, hand looks okay. Plaza makes his hand keepable. Invasion takes invasion, so they've got something good they want to protect. And it's also gonna take away our only play for the turn. Alright. I see how it is. Take Epiphany. Well, that's unfair. Opponent takes our epiphany and then casts their own. So we're pretty far behind, since our hand's not particularly strong. Opponent kept two cards as well. Yeah, we'll need to top deck our bombs, pretty much. Can have a look with the silver wing at what they kept on top. Swamp. Alright, so they need lands. Five five conjurant. Yeah, can't kill that at the moment, so that's pretty annoying. Wanna keep land in hand in case of Kasmina. Guess we'll take five. Just waiting for a bigger creature so we can band together the conjurant maybe. Giant's a good one, so yeah, opponent kind of doing what we want to do in this game. Disrupt us, take away our value cards, and then play their own value cards. And now they're up five cards to our single band together that doesn't do anything. Don't have any good blockers for their creatures, so yeah. Gonna need to get some lucky top decks to get out of it.
So here we could triple block the giant. They get to kill Druid and Snare Spinner. Probably have to go for it, since we're just taking too much damage otherwise. But if they have instant speed removal, they kind of destroy us. Alright, Prison Realm's not horrible. They might also have a no escape up here for all we know. So we can Realm the Conjurance. And then we could band together the Silver Wing. Start getting in there. Lazata plating, that's rough. Yeah, we could band together the Conjurant to shrink it, maybe that's worth it. Probably just say go for now. Yeah, banding a response might have been worth it just to make sure it shrinks. Because now if we wait and they have another instant speed removal or interaction, things could get ugly. Alright, fine, I'll do it now. Probably should have done it in our turn, honestly, in, in response to the plating. Don't think we can take five. Alright. That's a good one. Definitely have to kill that. Dismissal bouncing their own conjurance. It's a nice play. Well, you're a little bit late to the party, friend. So your opponent's going to be drawing a million cards a turn. They've got the superior board presence. Not sure how we get our way out of this. Triple block the 5-5. Five five, or we can double block the Conjurance. And then they remove a counter and kill the Silver Wing. I would rather just triple block here, I think. They probably just remove a counter and then finish these two off. Yeah. Well, our draws weren't particularly great. All right, six and two, let's see if we get the last one here. All right, and looks reasonable. We'll need to draw a basic so we can play a druid on two. Otherwise it's a turn three druid. Or we can play a reaper. I think we still play the druid here, just develop our mana. Maybe cast a Ceratok. Toll of the invasion. Yeah, better get used to it. Probably takes Reaper. Unless they can't deal with Silverwing or Ceratok. But Reaper's kind of the grindy card draw engine. All right, takes band together, so they have a creature they want to protect. Don't really want to tap druid and have it killed. Probably taking Death Sprouts if they took the other removal spell last time. Alright, well, now we can attack and play a Ceratok. And then we'll have the Reaper to maybe draw some more cards if her opponent starts killing our stuff. Wow, her opponent just concedes. It's a pretty aggressive concession, but I'll take it. Alright, back to 24, so we peaked at rank 20, ended at 24 after entering Mythic at 40, so not bad. Crack some packs. Elder Spell, good sideboard cards, mediocre main deck card, 
Think back when Pick One would take the Outburst here. By far the strongest card, and also pretty splashable still. Ignite a Beacon. Yeah, I mean, if you've got a ton of Planeswalkers, it could be a playable card, but uh, I wouldn't take this highly. Gleaming Overseer is great, Pegasus is great, Dismissal is very good. So, in a pack one, pick one situation, I don't think we can take Ignite the Beacon. Would have to go with Overseer or Pegasus. But if you get this late and you already have a few Planeswalkers, then why not? Nice grindy two for one. So for now, I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.